Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be talking about prefix sum arrays and difference arrays. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about higher dimensional prefix sum arrays and difference arrays. In this case, we're going to be starting off with two dimensions. So with multidimensional prefix sum array, uh, and if you haven't watched the one dimensional prefix sum array video, make sure to watch that so that you understand what's going on. But Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the 2D prefix sum array, and the 3D version will be easy to understand once we understand the two-dimensional way. So we're going to jump straight into it, and we're just going to let pre-row column, right, pre of row column, equal to the sum of all the elements in the rectangle with corners one to one all the way to row column. So let's say, for example, we had row equals three and column is equal to four. If I had an array that looked like this, a 2D array, that's five by five, then what I had before where row is equal to three and column is equal to four, that's going to look something like this, right? Row is three. You're always looking at the left for row and you're going to look at the top for column. So here we have the green part, which is three, four. And essentially, what we're saying is pre, like the prefix sum array array um, at 3, 4 is the sum of all the elements up to that point. So all the red region and the green region. So the question is, how can we generate the prefix sum array for any row column now? Obviously, one way of doing this would just be would just to be go over every single element that we've, you know, that's previous to the current element. Right? But that would take O of n time, or sorry, O of n squared time. And that's a little too slow for our, our liking because if we have n squared tiles and each time takes n squared to take the sum, then that's going to give us an n to the fourth solution for that. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say that pre row column is equal to the red region plus the green region to start off with. So we're going to look at exactly how we can make this faster. But for now, let's understand that it's the red region plus the green region. So the green area is the value in the original array. So let's say, you know, we're already given the 2D um, grid of numbers, right? All we need to do is first retrieve that green area that can be easily indexed in my original array. Next, what we want to do is we want to find the sum of the red region, right? The sum of the values in the red region. Now, how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to combine the sum of the two yellow regions in the tables to the right. So you can see that the first yellow region goes from 1, 1 to 2, 4. And then the next region goes from 1, 1 to 3, 3. And so you can kind of see that when you combine these two together, that's the total red area, right? When you overlap them together. So you can see the first yellow area. And what is the index of that? Well, if we already said that pre row column is the sum of all the previous values, then what is this going to be? What is the first yellow area be going to be? Well, it's going to be pre row minus one column, right? We're going to go up one row, but stay in the same column as the green square. And for the second yellow region, what we have is we want to go in the same row, but a column to the left. And so that's going to be pre row column minus one. Okay. Now, there's an actual issue with doing this kind of solution where we had the two yellow regions. And the problem with that is that we are counting the dark area, the dark yellow area, twice, right? When we add the two yellow regions, when we overlap them, that dark yellow region is counted twice. So what we need to do is we actually need to subtract it from the total sum that we've already created. And that yellow area is actually just going to be pre-row minus one, right? Up one row, and then a column to the left. So column minus one. So in summary, the dark yellow is pre row minus one, column minus one. So 
So when we combine all of this together, we get that pre-row column, or in this case, I'm going to write RC just to be a little more concise. The total sum up to that point is the yellow, or is the green region, sorry, which is array RC from the original array, plus the first yellow region, which is pre R minus one C, plus the second yellow region, which is pre R C minus one, and then subtract the dark yellow region, which is pre R minus one C minus one. And in total, that's basically the generation or generating our multi-dimensional prefect sum array. And so one little thing that you should have noted is that I've been using uh, one-based arrays, right? I started counting at one instead of zero. And the reason I did that is because it's actually easier to deal with out-of-bound errors um, when we're doing this, right? When we one-index things, you know, when we're doing R minus one, C minus one, it's really annoying to check whether or not I'm in the, you know, the right column, right? In the zeroth column. Uh, but if I do, you know, one index, if I go one row above, I'm in the zeroth index, right? I'm in the zeroth row. And that'll give me a value of zero, right? So that's really nothing. Okay, so now you might be wondering, we've generated our prefect sum array. How do we query the sum of a specific region, right? So we've generated the prefect sum array. We want to get the sum within a region. So let's say, for example, we have this right here. What is the sum of all the values in the red area? And say we're given the uh, bottom right corner and the top left corner. So the bottom right corner is going to be 5, 5. And the top left corner, sorry, is going to be 3, 2, right? Row, column. So how do we get the sum within this specific range right here? Well, it's actually quite simple. All I need to do is remember that the prefix sum array can only store the numbers or this total sum from one to one to any arbitrary row column, right? So if I want that red region, what I need to do is I need to take the pre-5-5, five five, the bottom right, and subtract the green area. Now you might be wondering, how do I calculate the green area? Well, pause the video for a second and see if you're able to get that. Okay, so now we can move on. And if you've tried it, you should have seen that it's really similar to how we generated the prefix summary as well. So how do we get the green area? Well, all we need to do is consider the two yellow rectangles. And once we've done that, essentially what we should realize is that once again, Remember that the dark yellow region is counted twice, right? The total green area is the sum of the two yellow regions previously. And just remember that the dark yellow region is counted twice, so we just subtract it once. And so once again, the green area is the two yellow regions minus the dark yellow region. So what we have is when we combine all of this together, I'm going to leave the, you know, the explanation on the screen, but I'm not going to be talking about it because it's really similar to the generation of the prefix sum array. When we put all of this together, we get that the sum from row one, column one, row two, column two, the top left, bottom right, is equal to pre R2, C2, the total area from to the bottom right, minus the first yellow region, minus the second yellow region, and then adding, right, we want to add that, we want to add back that dark yellow region. And that's going to be R minus 1, R1 minus 1, C1 minus 1. And if you understand the array indexing in two dimensionals or three dimensions, this should be pretty simple. Take some time to actually think about what the sum actually represents and how we're indexing the numbers. And once you're comfortable and you're actually understanding these concepts, you can make like a template in your own library. And so once you need this again, you can refer back to it. So in summary, this is the sum for the top left to the bottom right. And I'll have it on the screen for a little bit so that you can jot it down or write it down somewhere. Okay. 
So now let's talk about the difference array, multidimensional difference arrays. And difference arrays in multidimensions is actually a little more complicated, but once you get the gist of it, it's actually quite easy to understand. Okay, so we can use the properties of the prefix sum array generation in order to determine what we need to do in order to generate the difference array from our array. So the key thing to remember is that when we do the prefix sum array on a difference array, the original array is formed, right? Perform the prefix sum array algorithm on the difference array, we get our original array back again. So once again, keep that in mind, the PSA of a DA is the original array. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let pre of 2 is equal to the array and array 2 is equal to the difference array. And this actually kind of makes sense. So think about it in this way. If we have array 2 and we perform the prefix sum array algorithm, then what we get is pre 2, right? Now, because array 2 can be substituted for diff and pre 2 can be substituted for array, we're actually going to substitute them with each other, right? So array 2 becomes diff, pre 2 becomes array. And so when we do that, we have diff when applied the prefix sum array algorithm, we get the regular array back again. Okay, so just remember that pre 2 RC is equal to all of this, right? That's how we generated it the entire prefix sum array um, for multi-dimensions, right? So we took the initial value in the regular array, added the first yellow region, the second yellow region, and then subtracted the dark yellow region. Okay, so this is gonna get a little complicated, but follow with me. Once again, we have pre2 is equal to array, and array2 is equal to diff. We've already established that they go hand in hand, right? We can perform the prefix sum array algorithm on either side, or the difference array algorithm on either side, and we'll get each other, right? So we've already established that this formula makes sense, right? This is just the prefix sum array algorithm. The next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to substitute each one of them with their counterpart. So pre2 with array and array2 with diff. And so we, what we get is that array RC is equal to diff RC plus array R minus 1C plus array C minus 1 minus array R minus 1, C minus 1. And so what you should notice is that we have a single array of diff in there, right? We have a single diff inside of that. And so what we can simply do is actually solve or rearrange our formula to just isolate the diff RC. And so when you isolate that, you get the formula of diff RC is equal to array RC plus array R minus one C minus one minus array R minus one C minus array R C minus one. Okay, based on how the prefix sum array is made, if diff three two is changed, the entire red area in the original array is changed. So let's say we did actually update diff 32. Well, this is exactly what's gonna happen. The region from row column to max row max column all the way to the end is actually going to be updated with that value. And that kind of makes sense, right? We did that with the single dimensional difference array as well. If we update one value, the entire rest of the array gets updated. And so how do we combat that? Well, all we want to do, for example, is we want to update the green region without updating the red region. So very simply, getting the whole idea, and hopefully you're getting the hang of this, is that we just need to unupdate the entire red column or the re entire red colored region. And so, for example, we subtract what was added in the red region to diff32. So how do we do that? Well, very simply, we can un update the two yellow regions shown below. So we can update 
you know, the bottom part, we can update the, the yellow part on the right. And then just remember one last thing is that we need to make sure that we update, right, the dark yellow region. So just remember that. It's the whole idea of overlapping um, uh, updates and then make sure we're unupdating the last region, right? Or in this case, since we unupdated the yellow regions, we need to update once again the dark yellow region. Okay, so if we need to add C to a region R1, C2, or sorry, that should be R1, C1, and then R2, C2, all we need to do is say, add C to diff R1, C1, right? So that it updates the rest of the entire array. Subtract C from diff R2 plus one, C1, right? So that's gonna give you the entire uh, bottom region, right? Then what we wanna do is we wanna subtract C from diff R2, sorry, R1, C2 plus one. So that's gonna give you the right side of the region. And then finally, add C to diff R2 plus one, C2 plus one. So that's just the entire dark red or dark yellow region. Okay, so basically we can use the concept similar to 2D versions in order to implement higher dimensions. So for example, we could use a cube for three dimension PSAs and DAs. And that's pretty much for higher dimensional prefix some arrays and difference arrays. So in this video, you just learned about how to update and generate prefix some arrays, how to query, and then also how to update using the difference array.